give us a drive to 13 Mitigator Ford Fusion. I'd like to thank you for listening to Let's Talk Racing.tv. Let's Talk Racing. I'm Teddy Peter, driver of the number 17 Toyota in the NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, and you're listening to Let's Talk Racing. <laughs>
All right, well, let's go the other way. Give us your, what's the worst plate? What's the worst track you're going to run at? <clears throat> oh, man, that's a that's a coin toss there because you know, I felt like Loudon was my worst track, and they took that off the schedule. So <laughs> we should be golden. Um, but you know, it, it's all about consistency, and uh, you know, it, you can go to these racetracks and get on a roll, kind of like Lee Pulliam has been with the late model stock here here recently. And uh, as long as you're smart on how you race and you can do front towards the end, and you're finishing top three, top five every week, <clears throat> it's just a matter of time before you win and come. Oh yeah, I mean. Um... You you you've been cranking out pretty good, so I I anticipate you to be knocking on the victory lane's door here shortly. We sure hope so. <clears throat> it it won't do nothing but help our cause, that's for sure. Well, now the the past racing we've been having, of course, you've had all these nice high temperatures. How, how's that been affecting you inside the the truck? Well, <clears throat> you know. I uh, took a little extra initiative this year and really concentrated on my fitness. And uh, believe it or not, I, I lost a little bit of weight and shaped up. And when you see these high temperatures coming, uh, the people that that work you out every day, you know, they give you a regimen that you can you can do to to uh, you know fight against the heat. And, you know, I just follow that routine, and it helps being in shape. <clears throat> you just try not to, you just try not to, to eat unhealthy and know what's going to break you down during that heat. Try to do everything that you can to break that heat. Yeah, I used to remember just in the late models when we were running 100-lap races, I'd, I'd sweat off a good 10 pounds. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it's like that now, but, uh, you know... Uh, you know, uh, spaghetti noodles, Pedialyte, and water are my friends when it when it's really hot. Oh yeah. Yeah, I notice. Uh, it's it's strange. You're you're one of the first ones I've heard actually going to Pedialyte. Oh man, people. I'm I'm a big baby. It's for babies, and I'm a big baby, so it it, it does the trick. Uh, don't don't go, don't go that way. It's not just for babies. <laughs> but it it definitely helps you. Yeah. Good question. Oh, I got I got uh, a new person with us tonight. Her name is Crystal Her. I'm his niece, and I'm helping him out with the show. <laughs> how you doing? I'm doing good, sir. How about you? I just got here. Unfortunately, I arrived late, so. Oh. That's bad on my part. <laughs> just, just like the women, they arrive late. Oh, don't you start with that. <laughs> You're real funny, yeah. Joke all you want. Now, how is it uh, this year? Let's see. Isn't this the uh, first year you're running with Todd Bodine as your uh, teammate? Yes, uh huh. This is first year over at Red Horse. I mean it. Okay. How how's that going for you, having him as a teammate as as opposed to being a competitor? Even though he still is a little bit a competitor. Well, I mean, he's uh, you know. He's a good friend and uh, a great teammate. We we get along good, uh, but we respect one another on the racetrack. It, uh, just because we're good friends, uh, you know, it doesn't affect how we race each other. We're still going to race each other hard, but uh, you know, there's a respect deal there. So it, it's you know, nothing changes when you get out on the racetrack. But you know, I've never had a run in with Todd before, and. Uh, you know, he, he's good for the company, brings a lot of experience uh, to our team, and you can't deny that. So hopefully one day my resume looks as good as his. Well, there you go. I, I'm sure as, as much as you're going through all this stuff, it will be, if not better. Well, we hope so. He knows well as I do that it's uh, being in the line of business uh, in the top three series of NASCAR. It, it's, it's tough to, to break in uh, for a newcomer. And, uh, you know, I'm very fortunate in the position that I'm in and hope I'm here to stay where I can make that resume look good. Yeah. Now, um, what's been what's been happening with John? 
John King. Uh, I don't know. I hadn't spoken with John, so uh, I uh, hope he gets back soon. Now, did, did, did they basically shut him down, his down, because they didn't have the sponsorship stuff coming through? Uh, I don't. <clears throat> I really don't know what the deal was on that. Uh, you know, uh, it was shut down because of funding. Uh, what I was told, but you know, we we have key codes on the door. And the way I look at it is, as long as my four-digit key code works. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you get in the door, you still got to ride. Is that what you're trying to say? As long as I can get in the door of the shop with my four-digit code and my name is still above, uh, still on the above of the door top of the 17 truck, uh, that's really all I have to be concerned and thankful. Well, I, th I think your sponsors are, are always going to be happy with you. I mean, you, you've been, you've always run good. You usually get some good races out there, and I mean, like, the the Daytona win that uh, was that two years ago. Right, right. Well, I mean, it, I've been again. I, uh, all that couldn't be possible with, without Tom Deloach, the owner of Red Horse Racing, giving me the opportunity to drive his Tundra uh, four seasons ago, and it's uh, kind of cool to say that. I've driven for someone for four seasons. Uh, you know, it, it's really cool. I, I'm living the dream. I have my dream job. <laughs> you know, when some people in that garage area think they have it bad from a driver to a crew member, I think they need to back up and pinch themselves because uh, there isn't too many people that can say they fly on planes to different parts of this beautiful country and work on race cars for a living. Mm -hmm. And uh, now you, if I remember correctly, live in Danville, right? I do. Are you, you so you're still making that long trip down to Carolina you know, all the time? I do, I do. I'm there uh, every week. Uh, you know, if it's one day or uh, all week, whatever our schedule is like. But uh, I'm making a point to be there every week, and I, I just I love being there. Now, um. When's the next time you guys are going to be at Martinsville? Do you know off the top of your head? First of October. First of October, okay. okay. Well, I know I will be definitely seeing you there, as usual. <laughs> cool. But uh, um, what, what else you got? Um, oh, here, we'll do the quick question here. What do you think about the thing with Marcus Ambrose? Uh, I, I hate to sound ignorant, but what's going on with Marcus Ambrose? Oh, boy. Oh, no. Oh. You, you must not have been watching any race in this past Lord. week. Lord. Jeez. Oh. Uh, he came up positive for a drug test. They, they pulled him uh, out of the Sprint Cup race and uh, put yeah. put um, Sam Hornish Jr. in. You're talking about Almondinger, not Ambrose. Yeah. Oh, jeez. I am. Yeah. Yeah. Brain fart. That's okay. You, you, know, you have those time to time, so forgive him about so that that's, one. That's what I get for not doing notes. I mm -hmm. tell you. Uh, but hey, at least I remember Tony won. <laughs> yeah, gee, I'm not thrilled about that one. I'm not going to talk, keep my mouth shut in that. Um. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Well, I should have brought him over and put him over here behind oh, you. Oh, yeah, you're funny. You're really trying to push we my have a, buttons tonight. We have a large stand-up of Tony Stewart here, too. Yeah, pretty big, so. Hey, Timothy, that's right. You should send us one of you so we can stand you up back here, too. I bet. Well, I really <laughs> want to get uh, Tony Stewart status and, and they make a stand-up, and hopefully you guys will put one in your room. Well, I'll just have to remember next time to do a nice picture of you standing up in a, one of those Superman-type poses <laughs> and then uh, take and get my dad to put it on some uh, uh, um, banner material or uh, uh, the, the yard signage-type stuff, and then we'll have you set up. All right. Sounds good. Go ahead and thank your sponsors, and I'm going to go in the other room and answer the phone real quick. Well, we're we're still looking for sponsors, so. Uh, well, whatever you have with sponsors, you might as well name because besides mom and dad, you do think your sponsors to they help you get where you need to go. So we'll give you some time to do that before we let you go because we have the next person calling. I got you. Well, you know, Toyota's been a big part, and we can't thank them enough. And you know, that's that's pretty much it. They've been on our truck every week, and they're a great manufacturer and a great supporter. And uh, we're still looking for that that. Uh, 
a corporation out there. So. Well, good luck with that. Hope you can get some more sponsors to help you out. Did he remember to thank the two most important sponsors? Yeah. What about the two most important ones? You know who those are? Those are. Hey, Timothy. I'm 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 waiting for you to tell me. <laughs> Mom and Dad, <laughs> yeah, come on now. Your parents here. Uh, yeah, they they definitely uh, helped me get there, and uh, you know my mom's my biggest fan, and Aww. Uh, my dad passed away in '01, and he helped me get to where I'm at. So. Well, he would be very proud of you, I'm sure. Absolutely. All right, well, let me let you go ahead and go have fun, uh, and I'm going to snag Robert Richardson here in just a second, and you go have yourself a good night, and we will catch you later. All right, have a good night. Thanks you for too. being on here. Push the right button. <laughs> and hey, Robert Richardson, Jr. It's Let's Talk Racing. Howdy. Howdy, do. <laughs> Trying to do this big build up. Yeah, good, do a good job with that. Hey, how you how you feeling today? I'm feeling great. Uh, I'm actually down here in South Florida right now, uh, hanging out with a bunch of friends of mine, uh, and one of them's getting married uh, down here on Friday. Oh wow! Down here, you know, celebrating uh, the big event, and uh, actually about to sit down, have some supper, and and just kick back and relax for the evening. Well, that's good. I'm surprised that you're still in Florida. I figured you'd be back in Texas doing some more hunting. Or <laughs> yeah, I went back home for a few days, but uh, ended up turning up back around and coming back out here. Yeah, well, I haven't talked to you guys in forever. What's been going on? Oh, doing the same stuff. Uh, faith is getting a lot better. Yeah, it's it's getting to the point where we're going to be doing it's one of those good news, bad news things because she's been talking so much. And eventually she's going to get everything lined up in her brain for all that stuff, and then we won't be able to keep her quiet. <laughs> hey, that's a good thing, though. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Mm -hmm. uh, we, had, we had some fun today. She was trying to – there's lots of different treats I have for her for, for when we do a different rehab stuff and everything when she does good. And she was telling, telling me one thing, and I and I kept – I always felt like doing 20 questions. We were going crazy. I knew exactly what she was – trying to say but just the last two words of what it was <laughs> finally i said all right i'm gonna go stand here you tell me which way to go <laughs> so i finally got to it and, and then uh i put my hand in a certain place in the fridge and she was saying pointing at me yes 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 pulled out and it was cream cheese then i knew she wanted celery and cream cheese <laughs> way to go <laughs> so yeah i figured uh with that little tap you got toward the end of the race uh that, that neck of yours would be feeling a little bit of it <laughs> yeah, I, we just uh, have had the worst luck, you know, this year. I mean, all, all the super speedway races that we've done, uh, we've been collected up in wrecks, and uh, you know, other races that we've run this year. You know, Texas, for example, had the left front shock, you know, fall off. Uh, Richmond uh, had a hole punch in our oil cooler. And, uh, went to Charlotte, uh, had an oil line, you know, blow up in half and you know ended up wrecking the car there so this year's just you know been you know just bad luck all, all the way around i mean the races that we've you know finished i mean we run well we just really haven't had you know lazy luck on our side you know per se but we, we had a good run going uh, in daytona uh you know we were i guess across the start finish line 17th but you know after that big wreck there uh at the, at the checkered flag you know uh, austin dylan and i got into each other i guess when he came back up across the racetrack and uh you know just you know ruined our race car but you know thank god we don't need you know that car again until february so and got plenty of time to rebuild it and uh you know hopefully make it you know a little bit better than what it was uh, this past time yeah uh I didn't know if it just got the front clip or if it got the clip in the main cage. Oh, yeah. They got the front clip for sure. Yeah. It looked like it was a little skinnier up front. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we shortened it up quite a bit. But, uh, you know, it's part of restrictor plate racing now. Uh, everybody wanted to see, you know, pack racing uh, back at Daytona, and uh, that's what they get. I mean, they had, you know, pretty good turnout for the nationwide race there, and, you know, just 
that's typical you know, pack racing at Daytona when somebody wrecks out in front of you and you just kind of hold on and cross your fingers and hope you, you know, make it through all the carnage. You know, but you know, we got through the majority of it all night long and you know, the snake bit us right there at the end. Yeah, now, um, during the nationwide race and practices and everything, y'all had to run a certain way. You were doing the two-car tandem. But yet, uh, during the sprint comp practice, um, how did it feel going back to the old style where you do regular drafting instead of a uh, two-car tango? Well, I mean, honestly, we didn't really get to do much practice uh, in the cup car. We pretty much did, you know, mock-up qualifying run, you know, the whole time that we were there because we had to qualify in. Uh, on speed, and uh, unfortunately, uh, you miss the show by you know five one hundredths of a second. I mean, you, you think about how fast that is. I mean, you can't even blink that fast. Yeah. And to, to be sent home, uh, you know, by that much, it's, it's just that much more aggravating and frustrating. Uh, not just to me, but to the race team and and everybody else. So uh, definitely, you know, got some work to do on our motor program and, and try to. You know, beef up. You know, you know more ponies up under the hood. So we're going to be working on that by the time Talladega, you know, comes around here in October, and yeah. hopefully have a better showing out there. Yeah, because if I remember correctly, you did actually you qualified 43rd, but somebody else in points was uh, helped kick you out. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, but I mean, you know, that was only if it rained out. You know, when the, they were going to try to line us up, but. Uh, you know, they had the past champions and uh, how the point situation went, but we were going to try to qualify in, you know, on qualifying, and it just didn't, you know, shake out uh, in our favor, you know, but that's what racing's all about, man. That's what keeps you coming back. You want to, you know, keep, you know, building your stuff up better and, and you know, going back the next weekend and, and you know, getting uh, redemption on, you know, what had happened from the previous week, so. Yeah. But, you know, the, the guys uh, at R3 have done a great job this year uh, as far as, you know, making cup races with Scott Riggs behind the wheel. And I'm uh, very proud uh, of everybody's effort effort this year. You know, it's uh, you know, definitely been a trying season on both sides of the fence in, uh, well, you know, in the Nationwide Series and the in the cup garage. So uh, gradually, you know, earning the respect of, you know, a lot of, you know, people in the garage area and, and seeing what our, our team is capable of, of doing. So uh, just can't emphasize enough how proud I am of all of our guys and, and all the hard work and dedication that they've you know, been putting into our team. Oh, good, good, good. Um, now, we have a new uh, host on the show here with us now. <laughs> Crystal, you heard her in the background a little bit. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, she was wanting to know... Uh, she heard me say something about why weren't you in Texas, and, and she was asking you where you were from. Yeah, where from Texas are you from? Like, what area? Uh, North Texas, around uh, Dallas-Fort Worth area. Because uh, my brother lived in Texas for a short amount of time, so I was just out of curiosity wondering where you're from. <laughs> Seems like everybody li lives in Texas. <laughs> I know. Like uh, North Carolina, you know, there in Charlotte, it seems like the majority of people are there, you know, obviously in racing, and they're all from all over the country. Oh, yeah. But, uh, you know, Texas is, you know, a pretty neat state to live in. You got a lot of you know, diversity in Texas with, you know, as far as landscapes and stuff like that goes. You got, you yeah. Know, the weather gets pretty crazy up there, though, with all that heat. Oh, man, you'd have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. It's been a little bit hot here, let me tell you. Well, that's what I'm hearing. All the, the heat waves are going you know, up north, even, you know, yeah. around Illinois, Missouri. And, you know, you know, on up, everybody's getting 100 degree days up that way, and that's kind of rare. So. Last week, we were in hundreds, 109, 110. Yes. I was gone for that week because I was doing some missionary work in a different place, but it was crazy. I would call my mom, and she'd tell me how hot it was here, and I was so thankful that I wasn't around this area. Yeah. yeah. Two weeks worth of it. Two yeah. weeks, yeah. yeah we, had, we had two weeks of uh, pretty much at 100 or above. Yeah, but it's, it's pretty wild, man. You know, they talk about all this global warming and, and everything <laughs> that's going on. I mean, it's, uh, it's starting to make a believer out of me, that's for sure. <laughs> so, well, there's, I'm a little bit of a science person, but I think it's the El Nino part of the season. Every four years, 
the weather with the winds in the ocean change so droughts and the weather is going to get hotter here we're going to have like droughts towards the plain we're going to have more hurricanes and places where they get typhoons are going to have more of like the whole weather flip flops no it's the japanese earthquake that's what caused it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah blame it on that roger sure hey well it shifted shifted the earth yes it, it tilted some plates the tectonic plates i mean and uh they actually said that some of the weather pattern that changed was from yes that so El Nino that. Okay. <laughs> well then, guess you won this round. Uh, it don't matter. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so uh, uh, we didn't do this in the beginning like we normally do. Go ahead and do your race resume so people that haven't heard about you or haven't heard you on the show before know something about you. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, you know, I guess you, I, don't, I didn't really get to hear the whole introduction you gave me. It sounded like you were probably you know, introducing some big famous movie star or something. <laughs> Uh, hey, hold it. Did, can I put the pictures we did when you were in the trailer on Facebook, maybe? <laughs> yeah, if you want. I didn't know if you would get really blushy or not, you know? Nah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, my, my name is Robert Richardson. I've uh, been driving in NASCAR, you know, since 2006. Uh, grew up in Texas. Uh, played <laughs> football, you know, most of my life. And uh, all the way up to college. Uh, went to SMU in Dallas. I uh, played a little bit of football there for a season and uh, got into auto racing the, the next year. I uh, started out racing Legends cars, and gradually progressed into Super Late models and the ARCA Remax series. Uh, and then in 2006, I got into the Camping World Truck Series. Uh, 2007, I uh, got into the NASCAR Nationwide Series, and, and that's pretty much where I've been ever since. Uh, you know, making you know, a couple of limited starts in the you know sprint cut series as well. Congratulations on that! It's quite an achievement. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, he's 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 a crazy guy. No, he's yeah. a good guy. He's a good guy. He put, he put, you would know about crazy. He's got to be Roger? good. He puts up with me. Jeez. I know, Lord. <laughs> that sound about right. Yes, sir. <laughs> 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 and and when we when we bring our buddy along that keeps your phone busy for a couple of months after the race. <laughs> yeah, yeah, old Charles, man, he he's a pretty pretty cool dude. I, I actually called and talked to him the other day. Oh yeah, cool. Yep, yep. He's he sounds like he's doing pretty good. Yeah, we'll have to uh, get get you hooked up with him. We'll have him come out and visit you again at uh, on at Richmond. Yeah, yeah, you guys, you know the deal. Just give me a holler a couple of weeks before the race, and no problem. Mm. What's uh, any any news coming up of any possible sponsors you got coming up for some of the races? Uh, yeah, nothing uh, right now uh, is happening. I mean, a lot of the teams right now are struggling trying to find sponsorship opportunities and and then creating those you know partnerships and relationships with people to to get them involved in NASCAR and and you know. Just giving them an opportunity to see, you know, what the sport's all about and how a lot of the companies are, you know, branding drivers and teams and, you know, having, you know, a, a different way of, you know, promoting their products and their, you know, companies. But uh, it's just, you know, everything right now is, is so expensive and, and especially in the United States and everybody's just you know, really trying to just hang on to what they have right now as far as funding goes and, uh, you know, advertising budgets and, and things of that nature. So uh, it's just you, you can't blame people for for not you know being in, in involved in, in trying to sponsorship a lot of these teams. But at the same time, uh, it's, it's definitely you know hurting a lot of the, the smaller teams. You know that are, you know in dire need of, of some sort of uh, funding and sponsorship. Cool. Now, last question for you. What's with the beard thing? I, I've noticed you, you're <laughs> getting into the, well, you're trying to do uh show, uh, what is this, a competition going on with some of the drivers now, or what? <laughs> I like to look homeless, you know. But <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of the you know guys have no shave November. I pretty much have no shave all year, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I just, you know, felt like growing it back out, uh, you know. Seems like everybody, like you know, gets tired of looking at me with a shaved face. So everybody says, "Grow your beard back out." I'm like, "Okay." Yeah, you look yeah. like you got such a baby face when it's not shaved. 
Yeah, it keeps, it keeps all, all the women fooled, that's for sure. You know, they think I'm younger than I really am. <laughs> yeah, I just, I got fussed out yesterday because I was letting mine grow out way too long. Yeah. Tiss, tiss, tiss. Somebody, somebody reached up to give me a kiss and then she grabbed some of my beard and said, get rid of it. <laughs> oh, you're in trouble. <laughs> So. All right. Well, guys, I'm I'm about to head back in here and get ready to go have supper with the rest of the gang here. They're all in here waiting on me. All right. Uh, appreciate you having me on the show. And uh, anybody that's listening, if you want to keep up you know, with our organization, uh, with R3 Motorsports, you can go to www.r3motorsports.org. Uh, and that's our website for the team. Uh, you know, if anybody wants to talk to me personally, I have a Facebook page. And uh, it, it is me. It's not some you know other person trying to run everything. But <laughs> yeah. any questions about racing or you know how to get into racing, uh, how to get into NASCAR or anything like that, I'll, I'll be able to lend you uh, some advice. So feel free to contact me. And as always, Roger, appreciate you having me on the show. And uh, hope you guys have a great evening. You All do right, too. You too. Now I'm also I still got to get back up with you here the next week or two about what I texted you earlier. Yeah, ten four. Hey, I'll be around. Just give me a holler. All right, bud. Have a safe one. You too. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. He's he's one of the nicest drivers I think out there. Mm-hmm. He seems like a really nice fellow, like really humble. Well, yeah, like I said, he puts up with me. Well, yeah, that actually might explain some <laughs> of it. I gotta put up with you a lot. And you're my uh, family, not but not near I don't as mind. much. Not near as much as he does. Oh boy. Oh, I've, I've known him for Should a while. Should I feel sympathetic for him? <laughs> We're both lucky. How's that? Yeah, pretty much. But uh, no, we, we were we were talking about uh, he was getting ready to get ready to go racing, and we were sitting there just BSing in there. He just walked in and dropped off everything, and was throwing stuff back on. And I said, "Okay, now we can do the question. Boxes are shorts now." <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> Only you. But hey, it, it's fun. But uh, no, he, he did he diddled up. Uh, Pretty good at college football until he got injured, so went to a second level. Oh, racing. how did he get injured? Playing football. But, like, did he tore an ACL? Did he break a bone? Um, did he get a concussion? I think he tore something. Because uh, a lot of uh, football players now, even in high school, are getting lots of concussions. Not as much as any tears or breaking bones. Let's see what happened to my other call ins here. Well, jeez, you got it on your head. <laughs> You're gonna be all right there. Yep. Mm-hmm. Where is you? Where is? Wow, your English is right on. Hey. I know mine's not any better, but. Yeah, a, um. Where is? You're really not. Yeah, you're gonna take that. Wow. I already yeah. sent it. Yeah. No, this is from Mississippi. They're used to it. Oh my goodness. Race car driver. What do you expect? Still. Um. You wins. We got, uh, actually, it's two of them are going to be calling in. I don't know if they're doing it at the same time or not. It's R.J. Johnson. He's a sprint car driver. He's been running some races out at Knoxville, Iowa, oh, wow. which is the big race track everybody likes to go to for dirt racing. Mm -hmm. You are informing me on that earlier. Yep. He uh, won last this past week. Uh, and Terry O'Connell, she's uh, gone back into sprint car racing and She's been out there practicing and doing some laps out there and mm -hmm. putting some time in the track. And still working on the car. What happened to the car? Building a brand new car. Oh. So, I don't know if anything happened to it. No, no, nothing. Working boats. Yep, or waiting on you. <laughs> so, yeah, really. Not anymore. <laughs> no. But, uh, and there they are. You know, it's Let's Talk Racing time, so let's do it. Hey! 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 <laughs> you got RJ with you, too? Yeah, he's coming on in here. We're all over at um, Mr. Carl Jeffrey's house, uh, the guy who owns Sprint Car, uh, Custom Sprint Car Supplies. Oh, wow. Cool. He'll be in in a second. He's outside cooking some burgers up for, uh, RJ's dad. Aww. We're all grouped up here. We've been working at the race car shop all day. And uh, we're, ready, we're ready to talk some racing, baby. All right. All right. Sounds good. Yeah, I've been, I've been also looking at flights to figure out when to get out there. 
Beautiful bean. Lovely, lovely, lovely. We're going to do it. We're going to do the show live uh, every night we can from the uh, Dangerous Curves compound across the street way. RJ's going to come over and sign autographs because all the girls are going to be looking at him for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, he looked like a cute rascal there on Facebook. I sent him a little friend thingy, so. Oh, that's cool. He'll look up. Hey, RJ, me, this is Roger Brim, uh, Lux Dog Racing's uh, host and owner, and say hello. Nice to meet you guys. Thanks for having me on. Hey, RJ, you you're got me, welcome. you got Crystal, and you got Tommy Tacey down at the end here. Of course, unless you're watching us on the Internet, you won't know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for the heads up. But, but we thought we'd let you know. <laughs> we're here to give you a hard time any way you look at it. Congrats on the win last weekend. Oh, thank you very much. It was real good. Uh, hopefully we can do more. Now, go ahead and do a, a little brief resume on your racing career and uh, tell us how you got into racing and where you're hoping to go. Especially this is your first time on the show, so we'll get to know something more about you. Okay. Um, see, my dad raced sprint cars from 1984 until 2003, so that's how I got in it. And my whole life was sprint cars because my dad was basically full-time racing, so... Uh, that's how it all kind of started, and uh, I started racing down in Florida, and uh, I won a track championship at East Bay in 2007, was Rookie of the Year with USCS in 2004, and uh, we mainly did the USCS stuff, and when we could, we got to East Bay, and uh, which was close to home, but mainly we drive to Memphis uh, every weekend and back just to race with USCS, and once they started rolling good down there and winning some races, we decided to come up here to Knoxville, and uh, here we are four years later. Oh, wow. Now, what do you think of the Knoxville track? Oh, it's uh, by far the nicest, neatest dirt track in the world, I mean, as far as I'm concerned. And I've been everywhere, Canada, Australia, and pretty much everywhere in the United States. And uh, if there's one place you're going to race on a weekly basis, uh, this is where you want to do it. So that's why we picked it. Yeah, now, I, I did get to do and watch the video that they broadcast from there. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's great, really, because like me and Terry were talking about the other night, I mean, the media coverage for just Knoxville alone is almost as good as the World of Outlaws. I mean, you can win a race in Knoxville, and it's on Hoseheads or any other media outlet just as quick as the Outlaw stuff is. So in that respect, it's also pretty much the best local track in the world. Good deal. Um, so you're, what, uh, 24 now? Yeah, I'll be I'll be 25 July 30th, so I'm getting up there, especially in race car driver years. <laughs> <laughs> now, you, are you hoping to get further on, uh, getting out of sprint cars, getting into open wheel racing, uh, like Formula, uh, not Formula One, but Indy cars or anything like that, or are you thinking about getting into the top three of NASCAR? Well, I mean, basically any options are open at the moment. I mean, um, the dream, you know, from when I was a little kid was to win an outlaw championship and win the Knoxville Nationals. I mean, that's always been a big thing for us, you know, growing up sprint car people. But, of course, you always thought about the Indy 500, the Daytona 500, and <laughs> seeing the guys that do both of those, and uh, guys that like double duty with the Indy 500 and the Coke 600 and do all that stuff. Um, Indy cars would be really cool. I think they're really exciting. And, uh, and the same thing with uh, the three NASCAR series. They all have something good to offer, and uh, it'd be really good to get in one of them. I mean, I can't. I don't think there's any racer that can say, I wouldn't be interested in doing NASCAR just because it's the biggest form of motorsports we have who wouldn't be interested. Yeah, def that's definitely true. Uh, you always got to shoot high, and, and hopefully you hit there. Exactly. I mean, you know, there's a lot of people in the sprint car world, and I've been one of those people when I was younger that say, you know, I'm not really interested. I, You know, sprint car racing is what I do, and it's what I do. But, uh, I mean, of course, you know, who, who doesn't want to be, a, a you know, a Jimmy Johnson or a Tony Stewart? I mean, I think that it's as good as you can do for an American race car driver, and uh, it'd be a great opportunity to get close to that. Hey, he said he mentions Tony because Tony's got good, Mom, good can, stuff. Mom, you can come and see yourself, please. <laughs> he's the lost way. Goodness, mother. <laughs> oh, Lord. I'm sorry. We're having uh, a side talker over here. We got trash talking in the background about Tony. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's part of it. That's all good. It's uh, different opinions than everyone, and that's what makes it good, especially Tony. He creates a lot of them. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I'm not that much of a Tony fan either, so I'm just yeah. being nice and keeping my mouth quiet. <laughs> uh, Terry, tell you, I've, I've uh, been talking to Tony a few times over the years here, and <clears throat> I've actually pissed him off myself once or twice at least. Oh, I'm going to give you a hug for that later. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I, I really got him in a pickle one time because in the beginning when he was, won his first race, I was at Richmond with him. And then the next time he won his next Richmond race, I was there again too. And there was a certain routine I was doing, you know, for luck for him. Oh, and then the, the next time he was there, he, he was giving me a hard time about, 
you know, trying to get an item autographed by him, the same routine I was doing. And I was being real nice three or four times. He told me, can you do it later? Can you do it later? I kept saying yes, no problem. And finally, I said, hey, this is like the fifth time. I mean, it's almost time for you to go race and get the hell out of here. But uh, he goes, oh, all right, give it here, you know, and then he signs it. And and uh, he says, this is why I do so many of these appearances each year for autographs. I said, and I turned around and told him, I said, too bad you're not going to win tonight. He said, he just stopped dead in his tracks and looked at me. Because it, and it hit him who I was. Because we actually talked about it uh, up in Dover. <laughs> oh, Lord. So, you're terrible. Uh, he, 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 he didn't look too happy at that point in time. Mm. Even worse. But uh, a little bit later on, I told him, I said, hey, this is supposed to be fun. Enjoy it. <laughs> exactly. There's worse people you could be in the world than Tony Stewart, that's for sure. <laughs> but uh, it, it seemed to work because me and somebody else that I know was real close to him, we were both hitting him with that, and it seemed to work because now he's back to a nice, happy camper, basically. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Raj. Hey, what? Speaking of enjoyment, uh, we got the guy who has the most fun in motorsports in the history of the world. It's Mr. Carl Jeffrey sitting over here. He owns a Spring Park Supply, who uh, sports both RJ and myself, and he said, you cannot believe the stories that he has to tell. Oh, well, boy. I hope to get a few of those when I get down there. Or up there. Hello oh, there, Carl. <laughs> hey, Raj, how are you? Pretty good, Carl. How are you doing tonight? I'm very well, thanks, mate. They they getting you to talk your, your lungs out there before you go horse and everything? Uh, we're cool. <laughs> we're having a lot of fun. We're hanging out at the shop, and everyone's enjoying themselves, and that's the main thing. We told them they had to break out their Crocodile Dundee voice. <laughs> nah. Oh gosh! Yeah, you gotta watch Terry. I know how she is. She gets you rolling. She ain't gonna let you stop. All right, I'm, I'm on it. No. <laughs> Carl has uh, moved over here several years back from Australia. He and his boys. And Carl is uh, I call him the Godfather of sprint car racing because he knows everything about it. But he was an accomplished uh, driver uh, back in the day, and uh, you just can't imagine all the success he's had. And, He's been a godsend for me, and I know he's helped RJ so much. And, uh, there's a lot of cool stories to tell. He's got a Buddy Baker story that's really cool. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, I, I tell you what, there there are tons of neat stories out there, and I love listening to new ones, especially I haven't heard before. I have a lot of fun with them, all of them, because I make them all up as I go. <laughs> Each story up as they want to hear it. <laughs> Uh, we're going to tune this one up and make it do this, or we're going to shift a little bit here and make it do that. Yeah, right. right. And it all works. That's why we don't get go. any work done during the day. We're too busy talking. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We, uh, from our section over here in the in the NASCAR small track stuff, uh, we had one night, uh, we went out to, where was it? Uh, NASCAR Sports Grill. Mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, we had a whole bunch of old timers from the area out there, and uh, we went for uh, I'd say about three hours uh, of doing stories, and, and it was all totally good. And we could have kept on going. Yeah. So anyway, how come you got it all done so quick? Three hours. We, I get to work every. I start work on Monday morning. We start telling stories on Monday morning. We usually finish Friday afternoon before we go to the races. Yeah. <laughs> about time to go qualifying, right? Right. <laughs> Or practice yeah i mean yeah there's been uh oh my god uh i've been lucky to be able to talk to a lot of people like that and you do got to figure you know everybody's sitting around waiting their turn to be on the show and you just can't <laughs> keep them on hold like that i'll put them all in and it's fun you know we we do what we do and it's um you know i've been lucky enough to be able to come over here for the last 26 years i came over 26 years straight and racing with a bunch of really good people and you know now I get to, I got to move here 10 years ago and uh, married my beautiful wife and we uh, are just having a ball we got our little race car business so we've got you know 10 to 15 people come in every day and that's all we do we tell stories and work on race cars it's a good deal hey that's the way it should be like we were just talking about Tony Stewart a while ago you got to have make it fun if it ain't fun get the heck out of here mm. absolutely Hey, uh, uh, one thing about R.J., R.J., you need to tell you the story about what happened to him last Friday night. Oh, yeah. Oh, we, uh, 
uh, Terry and, uh, and her guys uh, rented the racetrack, and uh, they said you can come out and practice along because we've been kind of working together on some stuff, trying to get her deal up to speed qu- as quick as possible. Yeah. Uh, I went out there first, and uh, we rolled around um, about four laps and a good time, I mean, really good time to be as greasy as the racetrack was and feeling pretty good about ourselves going down the back straightaway. And uh, rolled into turn three, and the rear axle broke right where the caliper mounts, or right where the rotor mounts on the left side. Oh. Uh, basically God. turned the car sideways, and I think I spent, I think I set the, the land speed record for going backwards at a half mile dirt track. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow, I mean, it wasn't talent, skill, anything, uh, but dumb luck that I didn't hit the fence. Oh my God! That, that and probably praying your butt off to God. <laughs> uh, my goodness. Uh. We didn't, we didn't hurt anything but a left rear shock in the rear axle that we broke and uh, spent, you know, uh, most of Friday night getting everything back in order. And we were sitting out there in the infield at the racetrack with uh, me and my engine builder, Aaron Long, and uh, just everybody involved, that, uh, involved in our deal and Terry's. And, uh, you know, you just got to you gotta keep a, a light sense of humor at a time like that when you're going good and you're working on the thing for four hours trying to get it back together at midnight in the middle of the racetrack. <laughs> and, uh, and I said, you know, the only thing we can do tomorrow night is win. I said, we're going to win. That's it. I mean, uh I mean, this is this is ridiculous that we're having to go through this, and uh, sure enough, we won. So whoever was looking over the top of us on Friday was doing the same thing Saturday. Well, now you're going to have to become superstitious and go do it again this weekend. Lord, that's <laughs> a lot of luck for you not to get. Oh Lord, hit that gate. It was uh, it was unreal when the thing turned around. I went, this is the junk race car, and uh, and it stopped uh, before the fence. I said, man, what a, what a good save I just pulled off. I got to tell everybody about this. Exactly. Good deal. Good. Hey, Terry, here, here's one for you the other night when uh, Luber Duber was going to race. Hi. was running practice. Uh, the, uh, oh, shoot. The, um, Can you get the valve straight? <laughs> I'm thinking of the stupid part. Uh, not the transmission, but between transmission and engine. Hi. Uh, torque torque. converter. Torque converter. Okay. Went out. Is that Carl? Yep. So he had, he had to haul the car back to the shop, jerk the engine, replace the converter, get back to the track, and he didn't get to qualify, so I had to start in the back. There was 20 cars in, in the race, oh, and uh, and they had twin 20s, so it was short races. Hi. He got back at 7.05, just at the same time when everybody was pulling the cars out on the track. They at least let him take two quick laps to make sure the car was, was okay. He got out there and started and uh, got all the way up to second. Before he ran out of time. Oh gee. He is an awesome race car driver, man. He is. Yeah. All he ever needed throughout his career was just a little money, and he was been a Dale Earnhardt for sure. He is. Yeah. But I love his attitude. Sounds like the rest of us. Yeah, it sounds like the rest of us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, one of those others that they got some really good talent, just uh, ain't got nobody to seem to put him out there. Which is really such a shame when stuff like that happens. Absolutely. Hey, uh, we just uh, had uh, RJ's dad, Roland. Pop in the house here with us. He's over there having a hamburger. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's eyeballing us now. We'll get him on in a few minutes. But, uh, yeah, RJ, uh, was kind of a blessing in the sky that he broke that axle when he did because that night he broke it on Friday night. He would have broken it hot laps and about 15 cars were run over him. Oh, gosh. Yeah, that, that would have been pretty bad during the hot lap time. It was absolutely amazing that it didn't break on the entry of the corner where it has the most load on it. It decided to break basically on the exit. Otherwise, if it would have broke on the entry of the corner, it would have destroyed the race car. There would have been no chance. Because you know, I've done that before. I broke a wheel going into turn three there and just mm. took my helmet back, and that was all that was worth. But uh, yeah, yeah, Going into turn two, you'd uh, have more of a chance to be doing uh, rough and tumble racing. Well, yeah, I mean, just having it break on the exit and, and, and not on the entry was somehow... Uh, just definitely someone looking over us there because that could have been really ugly for me and the race car. And we definitely wouldn't want anything Saturday if that happened. That's right. Hmm. Absolutely. Hey, uh, one thing we got to go cooking right here. Are there some races coming up this week we want to promote here in this area? Yes, there's um, Bloomfield. Is, uh, they've got a big fair race this week out in Bloomfield, Iowa. And um, it's going to be kind of cool. The uh, A whole bunch of people that uh, generally don't see sprint cars out in Bloomfield, Iowa, we're going to get to see some you know, incredible sprint car racing this Thursday night, so cool. Cool. it'll be kind of cool. I, I love I love fear races. You know, they don't have them back in my country, but <laughs> you can have a fear race. You know, there's a whole whole new bunch of people that never get to see 
any sort of racing because it's not their their go. They get you know they're walking around the fair and enjoying themselves, and they all of a sudden become sprint car or late model fans or even modifieds right. or whatever. It's it's just a really good piece. But yep, that that one starts this this tomorrow night out there in Bloomfield, and there's a whole bunch of cars coming from all over the place, so it should be fun. It's, uh, this, um, this week at Knoxville Fair Week, too, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so this week at Knoxville and Saturday will be a fair race, and that's always one of our biggest crowds of the year, and there's cows everywhere, and it's great. So, uh, <laughs> I think if you win, you get a half a cow, is that do, right? Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. yeah. If you win, yeah. If you win you get half yeah. one of them. But it's cool, especially me being from Florida, all yeah. the agriculture and stuff that's around the fair, it's definitely a different deal, and like Carl said, this brings in a whole new group. And uh, it's always one of the best races of the year at Knoxville Fair Night. It's really neat. It's just a, a good atmosphere and a lot of good food, too. Yeah, y'all going to sneak out in the middle of the night and go do cow tipping as well? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, well, I'm too scared for that. I'm yeah. not <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'll sneak out and go get a funnel cake and bring it back in the races, and that's about it. Yeah, that's a good deal. Just don't start snorting the powdered sugar. That's all I can say. <laughs> no. There you go. <laughs> Your heart oh, oh, well. That could be, yeah. We'll keep the jokes to ourselves, I guess. Much. <laughs> one thing we want to do this fall, we want, obviously we're going to do some stuff with you there at Langley, but we want to try to get RJ, um, yeah, maybe get him or get him in a can in his car and give him some laps and stuff. So we, we need to work on that because, by the way, he's the one who Junior and Kevin Swindell for Rookie of the Year in the sprint car gig, and so he can kick their butts. We need to get him something. There you go. Yeah, we'll have to see if we can find somebody. I, I did a couple of calls that, uh, but it was just one of those things that, uh, like, we, I talked to the uh, to Ellen about their group, and, and they don't have backup cars. It's only for their drivers stuff, so they don't do a rent a ride or anything. So, um, like that, because um, when I ran the USCS deal living down in the southeast, we ran like 15 or 20 pavement shows a year. Then I got to run Concord and Southern National and Mobile, Alabama, Pensacola. I mean, a lot of the uh, Radford, Virginia, a lot of the cool pavement tracks there in the southeast. So I've got some pavement experience and, and some really high-speed pavement experience in a wing sprint car. So. If you really need to get, you know, the opportunity to jump in anything like that, it seems like the dirt guys seem to excel, so it'd be really cool to try. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'll have to talk to some friends of mine and see if they still have a, a one of the older cup cars still hanging around. Right. Yeah, I think they still had the engine, too. Yeah, wow. just, just yeah, anything to show people you can do it. I mean, really, that's the biggest thing is just to get your foot in the door, as you guys well know. Right. And Langley's, a very, Langley's kind of a real true test of driving talent because you got to really hold for that race car, but it's got to around that thing. And yeah. all of, it's easy to overdrive right. the famous stuff. Yeah. All those guys in the canyon, they really have a hard time when they pop up in there. But, but I'm sure if we put Carl in the car, he could probably do a new track record for Maybe he'd be on the yeah, wrong side of the car. Yeah, I could probably do it all in 10 minutes instead of 10 seconds. I'm just saying. <laughs> You're on the wrong side of the car, though. We have to move you to the right. Yeah. That's right. The steering wheel's on the wrong side of the car. Yeah. <laughs> You'll get over it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Langley, Langley's a good testimonial to a lot of drivers. You, you've got uh, a flat track with just barely, what, about eight degrees of banking in it. Yeah. And uh, so once you learn how to get around that place, you can go to almost any place and, and do really good. A mm -hmm. uh, lot of uh, big-time names have uh, cut their teeth there and gone on to bigger and better things. Mm -hmm. Latest one, uh, Denny Hamlin. Greenville Pickens. When I Greenville raced there, we raced Greenville Pickens right. at, a U at a USCS race, and I think it was 2005, and we set quick time. Like, we were good there, and it's flat as can be. Right. I mean, that place is just was miserable to race in a sprint car, but it was really fun, and we were fast. Yeah. Uh, hey, you always enjoy it if you're fast, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can say that thing's miserable and, and a pain to drive, but if you're fast, it always helps. But we were really good there. And, uh, I mean, the flat I mean, the flat to the bank, or that, that stuff doesn't really seem to bother me on pavement. It's just easy to overdrive the thing no matter what. So, like yeah. Sarah was talking about the other day, the, the dirt car, the tighter it is, the harder you drive it. The pavement car, the tighter it is, you drive it harder, it's only going to get worse. <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a big hurry so I mean it'd be neat to do something like that and uh, to be a challenging racetrack would be I mean almost better coming from dirt I think for me than, uh, than anything else just remember on those paved tracks don't do any right turns yeah exactly well <laughs> yeah. we've been pretty fast on pavement in a wing sprint car pretty sideways so I don't think that would work in a stock car definitely not there ain't much to keep you straightened out if you do <laughs> mm -hmm. 
we've been around uh, we've been around Concord, North Carolina, going about 140 in a wing sprint car through that dog leg on the back straightaway, about half sideways on the apron. So, um, yeah, I mean that was pretty cool running sprint cars there. But uh, we can handle it. It'd be cool to get a shot at it. Hey, Raj. Hey, yeah. I want Carl to tell you about his company. Okay, Carl, throw it at me. Tell you about my company. My company is just a little sprint car shop, and as it turns out. We decided to try this deal out, and we got a um, a lot of guys put their stuff in there on consignment, and it's turned into quite a big business that um, now turns over quite an enormous amount of sprint car parts because because of the economy the way it is, people have um, gone into buying a lot of used sprint car stuff, and it's been really neat for us because it was just started off as somewhere for me to go over morning. And it's turned into quite a good business. It's, and, you know, we we just love being able to support, you know, the, the sprint car guys with the, the cheaper form of um, racing, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it's been fun. I think people like it because they can get in there and start telling stories to Carl, and sometimes he forgets to collect their money and they can get out the door while he's telling stories. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Pull, pull the wool over for, for Carl. Pull up. Yeah, exactly. They're not really nice to you over there, are they, Carl? It's already telling secrets on you. Jeez. Hey, Raj. Hey, Terry. We got RJ's dad, Roland, just popped in here. He was an accomplished racer back in the 80s, and the 90s, and early part of the 2000s. I actually competed against him. He was with Challenger up here in uh, Iowa when I drove their house car in California. So, Roland is a, he's a, I'm going to say this on air, he's a badass. No. You can say whatever you want. It don't matter. Oh, Lord, don't tell some people that. It'll go a little wild now. <laughs> so, Roland, say hello to Roger in the, in the gang. Hey, how you doing? Doing good, We're Roland. Doing good. Do, do, do a nice little bio on yourself so we'll know something more about you. Done. Well, you time? Yeah, you both you. We got plenty of time. It's my show. I'll run it as long as I want. <laughs> hey, Carl, that's like we could do stories here forever. Oh, boy. You can make some up as we go. Now, hold on. I don't have all night, though, do I? <laughs> I can be crocodile on day in just a minute. Uh, <laughs> G'day, folks. How are you? Does the burger need garlic? Gary <laughs> right. Razor. Right. It's rolling again. Uh, I started racing motorcycles in 71 or 72 when I got out of service at motocross. Then I got into AMA, got my pro license, a flat track, road race. Did that for quite a while, which is a blast. I've had a chance to run probably every major racetrack from Florida all the way to uh, Road America in, up in Wisconsin on the road racer. And then we got in, somehow or another, we ended up in go-karts, did that, and then did the WK stuff, basically back to road race stuff, the same tracks again. And then somebody talked me into building the modified to run at East Bay down there on the dirt. I started that probably in 82. And in 84, sprint cars are starting to come around pretty good. So I went to Gambler, met Ken Jenkins, got my first sprint car in June of 84. And the first six months I had that, I, I think I won like 10 races. And it, that took off real good from there. And then in 85, Donnie Wallace, which plays today's RV center in Tampa, which is the largest RV dealer in the country, decided to go road racing. And he had never raced nothing, so we helped him on that. So I got the road race into road race car for a year, and then I had a choice. Either the sprint car or the road race car. And I'm also the same year in 85, I won the track championship. Oh, wow. Florida Fairgrounds Speedway in the sprint car. And I... I at the end of the year, I decided the sprint car was more fun than a road race car, so it Absolutely. just just took off from there. And in '85 and '86, we ended up at Challenge Racing up here in Iowa, and uh, we stayed up here for a while. Kind of missed the race a little bit. Had a chance to run a World Outlaw Show at Knoxville, and then back to Florida, and just just continued racing all over the southeast yeah. of that. And then in '92, I won the track championship at East Bay. We're the only father and son. Yeah, there's, 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 there's yeah. two. There's, yeah. Robert Darrell There's Smith. two father and son combinations won track championships at East Bay. That's me and RJ and Robert Smith and Daryl Smith. Cool. That's kind of a neat deal that, you know, that something like that don't come around too often. So when I just continued racing, and I guess the last time I checked, I was probably the second winningest driver in Florida with over 100, 100 some feature wins. 
and, uh, and then RJ started growing up. 2004, I decided it's time for me to quit and him to race, so that's what we've been doing ever since. Cool well, beans. What's the cool part about this whole line uh, with RJ and his dad here rolling is they're a team, and I've never seen a, a family work so hard, and their mom and their mom. And RJ's mom over there, Barb's over there. They, it's really a team family effort. It's really kind of like the heartbeat of America in motorsport. You know, all these families who work hard, they put their looking for that one break. And Saturday night they got their break at, at Knoxville with that big win. And I'm telling you, it's a huge win. I'm so proud of them. Good deal. That, that, that sounds you great. Want to, you want to try to knock those out of the park all the time, as many times as you can. Absolutely. I could do some more. That's for sure. That's right. Not, I, I ran, I got a chance to run the Master Classic up here two years. After, you know, not being in a sprint car in a few years. Knoxville's a neat place to go. It, you know, it the first time I ran it, the only people that outrun me was Swindell, Lasofsky, and... <laughs> yeah. He didn't want to mention that he was the first car one lap down. <laughs> but that's all right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> they were cheating. Yeah. yeah. They're riding you out, aren't they? <laughs> You know, they race a hundred times a year. Right, know? but you know, like once a year I can get some laps at Knoxville. I'm happy. Well, he was going to practice Friday, and then, the, and then we broke the axle, yeah. so he couldn't get any laps. <laughs> well, you, you'll be glad to know that you have been on the same show that they have been on. How's that? That's, that's right. That's good. That's some promise for you. That's good. And yeah, we had them on, I think, about oh, three weeks, a month ago. Right, I remember that. Swindell, Lasowski, uh Kinzer. Kinzer and uh, Brad Doty. Oh, Brad that's awesome. that, Yeah, that's cool. We're having the Brad Doty Classic tonight. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the, they were talking about going out and running that, too. Cool. All right, man. So, um, what's now, your agenda for the rest of the week? I know you guys are headed for pizza. Pizza or the Tappan Yankee... Japanese buffet. It the, depends. We'll just drive somewhere and pick one, probably. But uh, now, um, what was uh, did Tina get up with you about the uh, magazine thing? Yeah, I gotta get her a photograph. I'm gonna do that tomorrow. I've been so, been so busy. Uh, that well, did, do you want to tell everybody what's going on with that? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. We got a little uh, Tina Kennedy and Roger put together a little project, uh, Hype Magazine, a little story on us. Got a radio show coming up uh, to do, so I'm trying to kick in the PR package built around my, my racing, my stunt back, and some other efforts we want to do in NASCAR and road racing and stuff. So it's pretty exciting. We've been looking for that one little marketing person to show up and put spice on it. I think we found that in Tina, so she's been really, really busy, and hopefully we can sell about 100,000 books just through the Bahamas. Huh. No racetracks in the Bahamas. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I missed the boat. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you're dying out in the background there, Terry. Sorry about that. I'll turn my head. Yeah. Uh, don't try to do too many things at once. I know how you drivers are. Oh. <laughs> By the way, everybody, when, I, when I'm in, in, uh, in Virginia, I stay at Roger's house, and I'm like a hermit in that back room back there working. <laughs> I don't ever stick my head out except to do the show. We send the dogs in to make sure she's still alive and kicking back there. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, it's all exciting. I can't wait to get this whole thing to Tina Cook and even I'll get her that photograph tomorrow and uh, she can prove or doesn't prove it. Good deal. Sounds good. 
Is that what you need to learn? Hey, well, that's what I was trying, yeah. And then uh, that's what I told everybody when I got out of the car. I said, I could probably go bull ride now and be all right. <laughs> that was pretty exciting. So, But we'll get the car better for her, and I think she'll be fine. Yeah, we'll, take, we'll have to take him down to go visit Robert Richardson sometime, Terry, and let him go riding the bulls out there. I know it. I know. I was thinking about that the other day. I thought, yeah, this, Robert Richardson would be somebody really to get him hooked up with, too, actually. Yeah. Yeah, well, if you, uh, we had Robert on right before you guys. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. Roger had a, uh, Robert had him a little endeavor in Daytona, didn't he? He, he um, did pretty good. He finished 17th, and just after he crossed the finish line, uh, Mr. Dillon's car came back up the track and tore his way up. Yeah. And then uh, he uh, missed by five thousandths of a second to qualify for the cup race. Yeah. Oh, Tough. that's rough. Tough. Yeah, I missed. I missed quick time at 360 Nationals last year by like 5,000. I know how painful that is. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So y'all are chowing down out there, eh? No, we just finished. Uh, Carl and Carlene, his lovely wife, uh, fixed us some what we call the, the monster burgers, which is fantastic. And then uh, Carl uh, cooked us some for Roland and Barb, who popped in a little bit later on. So uh, we're full. It was great. Uh, yeah. Terry, Terry's going to be ready to go to sleep, y'all. Uh-oh. Don't, don't be telling on me, Roger. Okay. Yeah. I don't put think her, he'll make any promises on that one. <laughs> throw, put her in a reclined position. Oh. Throw on the TV and she'll be asleep in 30 seconds. Totally. We'll try to get her to fall now asleep so I can take her ride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. I think she'll know where to find you, RJ. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go ahead and have a good night. All right, Roger. Nice to talk to you all with it was nice meeting you all, Carl and Roland, and first time being able to talk to RJ as well. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks for having us on. It was uh, really enjoyable. Enjoy it. Thank you. We'll throw you all back on again, if if anything, when I get out there. Oh, yeah, they're going to be around. We want to have RJ over sign an autograph for all the beautiful girls. <laughs> all right. He's a looker. He's a cutie. <laughs> oh, yeah, um, RJ, check me on Facebook. I think I sent you a request there. I'll do that um, for sure. Thanks very much for all this. No problem. Mm -hmm. You guys have a good night, and we will talk to you later. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Bye now. Bye. 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 Well, gee, that's the You're most that we've had at a, <laughs> in a call. It was like four people? Is there enough people yeah. Goodness. I think oh, jeez. I mean, when we're doing uh, shows where we have 10 or 15 people, like out at the NASCAR oh. Sports Grill or oh. something like that, uh, shoot, we've had guys come over drunk. Oh no! And think mm -hmm. and, and they don't realize it's a live show going on. <gasps> oh Lord! I mean, well, one, he, came, well. one of, he, he, he walked up to one of the, the nationwide drivers that had come from Carolina up here. Oh God! Friend of mine, and he asked him if he was gay. <laughs> on national TV. Uh, on our on our on show. On our national broad show. Ooh, that's so, why you always careful in front of a camera. <laughs> later on, probably about an hour later, and we were still going. And the the guy came over. Is this live? I said yes. He says, "Oh my God! I just made an ass of myself." <laughs> no, really? Yep. Oh my God! Just, just a tad bit tipsy there, bud. No, a tad bit. No, oh, Lord. So, wow. mm -hmm. so, so what'd you think of the guys we had on the show tonight? Nine two four seven three four three 
You can at least put that on silent. <laughs> All right, is your phone done talking now? Yeah, <laughs> I like the people that we had on the show. Sorry for yeah. arriving late here. Um, it was nice getting to talk to some of the people and getting their opinions on the guy that recently got caught with the, the drugs. Yeah, it was, wasn't Marcus. Yeah. I remember that now. It, was, it wasn't it was, Marcus. It was AJ. AJ. The dinger. Yeah. Yeah, the preacher. Yeah, that's what we were talking about this morning at now, breakfast. Supposedly, from what I've heard in the chatter, he, he does have med medicine that he does take, and, he, yes. and they think that that may have been what kicked He it. wants to get checked again. Well, they have a, a, a they have an A and a B sample they take. Yeah. So they're supposed to go back and hit the B. Which should already be done by now. Yeah, I thought so it was supposed to be done by Tuesday. Yeah. We'll hear soon if it was prescription or not, and if it's not, he's pretty much in yeah. trouble anyway. If it is, or you don't not. want to have another Jeremy Mayfield thing all over no, again. No, Lord. Yeah. Next thing you know, they'll be knocking on his door looking for stuff he took from whoever. <laughs> Jesus. But anywho, well, I'd like to thank everybody for being on the show tonight, and everybody for listening yes. and watching. So please and all the tune above. in again. Watch for us next Wednesday. Yep, I'll see if and I I'm can make it. I'm on the wrong it. side of the doggone thing here. I don't I know. forgot to bring my keyboard and mouse. <laughs> well, that was real smart of you. Well, that's all right. I can keep talking and walk around while you... I know. You guys do your thing. Let's talk right well, mm -hmm. thank you for watching Let's Talk Racing. Please tune in next time. You can hear about the latest in all the racing in Sprint and NASCAR. And we hope that you enjoy the show. And whatever else we decide to talk about. Yeah, we talk about all kinds of stuff Let's on be, here. Uh, we're trying to get AJ Hoyt in here before too long and oh. we're still working on Tony Stewart oh yeah <laughs> I'll, I'll be skipping that one yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. if you're scared say you're scared yeah no I'm not scared, no, I'm not scared. Just be thanks again for listening Sick. see ya